an alien aircraft breaks the silence of the night sky and starts falling towards the Earth, rapidly catching fire as it enters the atmosphere. The spaceship collapses into a lake and two heavily armored men emerge from the ruins. One of them helps his companion get out of the water, and as he passes out, he has brief flashbacks of the past. Upon awakening, the spaceman realizes that his companion has died of a severe chest wound. In the distance, he hears a robotic call, being a computer stranded in the lake. The man saves the machine and asks in an unknown language for information about the planet they landed on. He also asks about the whereabouts of other ships, but the computer tells him that there are no records of nearby ships. After his disappointment, the man prepares for the computer to download and transfer to him a series of data about the planet, its civilization, species, languages, and culture, something difficult and painful for the man to assimilate. After that, he seems to gain a second breeze and practices his aim with a destructive gun that managed to survive the collision. At nightfall, he makes a grave for his fallen colleague. The Outlander's new mission is to survive the unknown area, a vast forest, using only his gun. In the search, he finds the lifeless body of a whale next to a destroyed and abandoned village with signs of an attack by something other than a human. Noticing that he is being observed, the Outlander flees, but is intercepted by a horse rider who knocks him unconscious and causes his weapon to get lost in the river. While passed out, the Outlander is taken hostage to a nearby Viking village that is surrounded by a wooden wall. In a great hall, young Freya and her father, King Rothgar, have a sword fight. Freya tells her father that she will not marry her suitor Wolfric, a pretender to the king's throne. The battle concludes when Freya's father cuts her shoulder, so he decides to heal her. Wolfric shows up, but his pedantic attitude only makes Freya dislike him and leave. Rothgar and Wolfric talk about how a nearby village was destroyed, and Wolfric tells him that on their inspection, they managed to capture a man, but he apparently doesn't belong to any known village. Their hostage, the spaceman, is displayed in front of the villagers, amazed and mocked by his clothing. Wolfric takes the man to a hut for questioning. He asks the outlander his name, and he says his name is Keenan. Keenan lies to them, saying that he is from an island in the north and is actually their hunting dragons, but the men don't believe him and think it was him who attacked the nearby village. Keenan tries to escape, but the Vikings are too strong for him. After being held, Keenan tries to escape using a burning iron bar, but just before he succeeds, Freya appears to attend to him, as Wolfric requested. Rothgar asks Wolfric about the Outlander at dusk, but Wolfric tells him that he refuses to cooperate. Rothgar tells him that Gunnar, the chief of the destroyed village, must be sought out and explained that they were not the ones who attacked him. Wolfric hesitates about this, as he has a grudge against Gunnar for killing his father, the former king of the village, but Rothgar explains that this was because his father was reckless, and he does not want the same fate for him. Back to Freya and Keenan, she asks him if he was the one who attacked the village, but he denies it. Before proceeding, Keenan breaks free and attacks Freya and his guard, trouncing him. Keenan tries to flee in the middle of the night, and his plan would have worked, except for the alarm starting to sound and announcing an enemy attack. All the Vikings rush into action, thinking it's Gunnar taking revenge. They are surprised to see no one outside, only to realize that the enemy is already inside the village. An unknown enemy starts a killing and burning spree, a tentacled creature hiding in the stables. Keenan starts chasing the beast, but his guard starts chasing him. The guard is later killed by the mysterious monster, who carries him to the edge of the wooden wall. Keenan calls the creature Morwen, the real dragon he was looking for. Before going for it, the Vikings find Keenan, only to tie him to a rock. There, Keenan has flashbacks of Morwen attacking his world and in lamenting the loss of his people. The next day, a poor village boy offers some bread to Keenan, who accepts with suspicion. The village men try to find out who might have caused last night's invasion. They take Keenan to Rothgar, asking him about the supposed dragon he is hunting. Keenan explains to them that the so-called Morwen also attacked his people and that it lures beings with lights and then murders them. He confesses that he brought the Morwen to the village, but just before Keenan is executed, Rothgar intercedes for him, claiming that he doesn't quite believe his story. Keenan understands that they will hunt Morwen, so he asks Rothgar to go with them. The Vikings give him a horse and Freya a punch for the earlier attack, and it is then that they leave the village to look for the beast. A smith named Boromir offers Keenan some mead, but Keenan spits it out. Rothgar strikes up a conversation with Keenan, and he tells the king that if they don't stop Morwen, the village will have the same fate as his home. Wolfric announces several corpses in the area and proposes to form expedition groups, but Keenan does not consider this plan viable, considering it better to stay together. Still, Rothgar prefers to go in pairs. While investigating, a severed horse's head falls from the heights to Rothgar and Boromir. Another couple finds charred corpses outside a cave, and soon they find something dangerous. After hearing the screams of terror from the couple in the cave, they all congregate to go inside. They find a bear and start a fight, defeating it not without some resistance. During the struggling, Keenan delivers the final blow with his sword. Rothgar decides to spare Keenan's life after defeating the bear, granting him his freedom. The village celebrates the victory over the bear with a feast. Amid the celebration, Keenan appears again, 
only this time in the people's own clothing. To his surprise, everyone welcomes him warmly, and he goes to eat with Rothger. At dinner, the boy who gave Keenan bread appears, and Keenan decides to return the favor by lending him the mighty sword that killed the bear, on the condition that he should tell him his name, to which the boy only replies Eric. Rothger explains to Keenan that Eric's parents died, and they are taking care of him. Wolfric decides to start a game called Shields and challenges Keenan. Several men make a square course using only their shields, and the competitors must climb on them and then grope their way forward. After a series of pirouettes, Keenan falls on Boromir, but Wolfric, far from mocking, helps him up, now trusting him more as the people cheer their new member. After leaving the Great Hall, Keenan meets Freya, who thanks him for helping her father on the expedition. Keenan explains to Freya that it was not the bear who killed her people, but the Morwen, and that it will return any time. Suddenly, Gunnar's Viking group begins an enemy attack, bursting into the village. There is a clash of swords between the two sides, with Keenan and Freya killing a couple of enemies each. Rothgar encounters Gunnar, who charges at him, knocking the king to the ground. Before killing him, Keenan appears to save Rothgar, but just as Gunnar was pulling himself together to counterattack, his men tackle him and take him away, claiming they have lost and it is time for a retreat. Gunnar's group leaves, but not without Gunnar cursing Rothgar, accusing him of being the murderer of his family and people. The village tries to recover after the attack, and Freya explains to Keenan who Gunnar is. Years ago, Wolfric's father wanted to gather all the villages to plan an attack on the Franks, but Gunnar did not show up, feeling this as a betrayal, so both villages have reason to hate each other. Gunnar's group plans on their subsequent attacks on Wolfric and his people. One of them breaks away from the group to pee, and he's attacked by the hiding Morwen in the lake. Gunnar's men begin to fall one by one, believing it to be a surprise attack by Wolfric. Gunnar is left alone in front of the beast, deciding to attack it without fear. In the village, some of Gunnar's men appear screaming and surrendering, wanting to go in so as not to die. However, Wolfric thinks it's a trap, so he prepares his archers to shoot. Among the men appears Gunnar, who survived the Morwen and now calls for help. The archers fire, killing some men except Gunnar. Keenan asks them to stop shooting, and after this, he opens the village's gates for the enemies to enter. Just as Wolfric is about to hit Gunnar, everyone sees a series of blue lights catching a man in the forest and then devouring him. The blue lights turn red, revealing the wild Morwen, who escapes into the woods. Now everyone knows of the creature's existence. There's friction between Wolfric and Gunnar in the Great Hall, with the latter claiming that hitting Morwen was like hitting a stone wall. Keenan tells them that fighting the Morwen in open fields is impossible, so they must devise a trap. Wolfric doesn't trust the plan and says that Keenan isn't one of them, so they shouldn't listen to him. However, Keenan lashes out, saying that Wolfric is wrong just as he was about the supposed attacks by the Baron Gunnar. The two try to fight, but Rothgar separates them. The king favors Keenan's plan and says that what he advises will be done. The next day they decide to build a trap at the village's entrance, and Keenan requests flammable materials for some reason. They dig a pit several meters deep, which they hide as if it were just another hut. Inside, several poles are driven into the ground, filled with various oils. After everything is set, Rothgar offers Keenan a position in the village, making him one of his own. Meanwhile, one of last night's victims wakes up surrounded by corpses, only to be finished off by Morwen. In Freya's hut, she and Keenan share a bowl of stew, and that's when Keenan has something to confess. His people, Keenan's society, are actually conquerors of worlds. Upon arriving in Morwen's territory, they wiped out its kind with bombs. The remaining Morwens were hunted down to have dominion over the place. Turns out that Keenan was part of a group of space colonizers, and in exchange for being able to eradicate the Moonwar's life, he and his family were given a place on the planet where they could reside. Sometime after the conquest, Keenan had to leave for a new mission, but there he learned that one of the Moonwars had survived and was hiding in the ship's ventilation, the same Moonware that killed the remaining population. Keenan blames himself for that slip-up, but Freya tells him that he shouldn't be so hard on himself. Likewise, she gives him her family's sword to fight better. They all prepare for the trap, now with Gunnar's help. The warriors open the doors, and Wolfric and Keenan go outside, waiting for the beast to appear. They couldn't see much, and since nothing was happening, Keenan throws a torch into the forest, only to realize that the moonware is right in front of them. Out of nowhere, the village priest appears praying for the beast to leave, alleging it is a Lucifer's emissary. He's killed on the spot brutally, so Keenan and Wolfric start to run, passing the water trap and using the shields as a platform to escape to the other side. Still, Wolfric falls into the water next to the beast. To make matters worse, the warriors close the doors, leaving the two inside. Just before the archers unload their flaming arrows, Keenan offers Wolfric help by trying to hold him through an outside hatch and manages to rescue him in time to avoid the explosion. While everyone is surprised by the explosion, a new, smaller moon ware appears from behind, in the area where the women are hiding. To protect everyone, Freya decides to attack. Her father comes to the rescue, but a brief struggle against the beast leaves him helpless. As if that weren't enough, 
the first Moonware reappears from the fire, angrier than ever. Wolfric and Keenan decide to attack together, but they are no match for the monster. Gunnar chooses to help, but he's decapitated in a flash by the first Moonware, who then flees. Eric appears to tell Keenan that there is a second Moonware, so they run to help Freya. Unfortunately, she is found holding her father's lifeless body, who perished in the battle. The whole village leaves the following day, fearing another attack. Eric tells Keenan that he wants to stay with him in the village, but Keenan tells him that the place is no longer safe, so he has to leave with the others on the boats. He promises the boy that they will see each other again and then say goodbye. Keenan meets Wolfric, although the latter is depressed by the outcome, to the point where he does not feel worthy of the rain, Keenan tells him that they must fight the monster together. They both enlist a small group of men to go down the common well. Although the idea is crazy, it's the only way to find the Moonwars hideout. Keenan asks Boromir for new weapons, this time with more substantial materials that he will bring. Keenan goes with Freya and Wolfric to the lake where his ship crashed to recover some materials by diving down. While he manages to bring some things up, Keenan is surprised by a moonware under the lake. When he gets to the surface, he sees that the boat they were in was destroyed, only finding Wolfric, but with no trace of Freya. Boromir manages to forge a new sword, larger and stronger than any other. Already prepared, Keenan goes down the well until he finds a subway grotto. He waits for the others, and they begin to advance. Freya wakes up terrified, finding herself in the monster's nest of corpses. As she tries to flee, one of the beasts finds her. Before attacking, the beast detects intruders, so it abandons Freya to go after them. Keenan's group ends up in a cave with access to a lava floor. Soon they are attacked, managing to find the Moonwars' lair and wounding the smallest specimen, but with heavy casualties, including Boromir's death. Freya manages to get up, and they call out to each other. Just before entering a dark place, Freya detects danger, and the wounded Moonware appears, unable to see her and now helped only by sound. When they find each other, both the men and Freya make enough sound for the beast to attack, and Freya barely has enough time to dodge the smash. To get to her friends, Freya has to pass through a hole, but it is too small for her, so with no other choice and in a desperate act, they give the sword to Freya, who kills the monster on the spot. They get together, but far from having a warm reunion, they all look horrified at the amount of corpses in the cave. When they heard that something was approaching, they leave, and the last moonware sees its son's body, going berserker against the warriors. They all reach the end of a waterfall on a mountain next to a cliff. They try to escape, but the walls are too slippery to climb. Still, they try to do it, but Freya falls to be rescued by Keenan. Meanwhile, Wolfric is attacked by the older Moonware, and in a desperate act, he manages to wound him in the face. Freya remains stable, but the Moonware throws Wolfric towards Keenan, leaving him alone in the fight. He re-enters the cave with his sword and manages to cut a tentacle of the beast, although he doesn't hit it directly. Following the trail of blood, Keenan stumbles throughout, and just before being attacked by the beast behind his back, Freya appears attacking the beast, giving Keenan the perfect moment to lunge. However, the beast manages to drag him to the edge of the cliff, and while Freya holds Keenan, he is pinned down by the moonware. After struggling, Keenan gets his sword and cuts off the beast's hand, so it falls into the void. They both return to the dying Wolfric, who asks if the beast is finally dead. They confirm it. Wolfric offers Keenan the medallion that makes him king, regretting not having established a good friendship with him. Keenan corrects Wolfric, telling him that they are friends, and that's when he dies. Keenan and Freya climb up the cliff, finding Eric and the rest of the village in the boats down in the distance. The two share a kiss, but despite everything, Keenan says goodbye to Freya, telling her he has something else to do. She worries because she knows Keenan may never return. He actually goes back to his ship's wreckage, revealing that his wife was in suspended animation during the trip and that after the crash, her capsule ruptured, killing her. Keenan says goodbye and returns to his computer, which signals his comrades to pass by looking for him. Freya watches from the bushes as Keenan destroys the computer, leaving his only chance to return home. In the epilogue, Freya narrates how Wolfric and Rothgar are buried, giving the highest Viking honors for their worthiness to them, and that Keenan, once a stranger to the people, became their new king, with Freya becoming his new wife and Eric, his adopted son. Freya concludes with the sacrifice Keenan made, of how he was sent by the gods, but at the time of his retreat, decided to stay with them. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.